Hi, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. Thanks for joining me today. Our episode is pretty power packed. We've had some serious and also some very hopeful words from the father that I heard in my journal from this week. Uh, this episode is entitled The 11th Hour. That's good news to a lot of us that things are coming to a close. They're coming to a crisis and he wants us prepared. He wants us to stand strong and in faith because there is a good future ahead of us. We're going to, at the end again, be showing photos that you have sent in to me of wonders in the skies. Amazing pictures. Rainbows, where rainbows don't belong. <laughs> rainbows without a storm um, it, it, and other signs and wonders. He is speaking to us, wanting to assure his children that he is there with us and he will not fail us or leave us forsaken. We're going to start with the November 7th of 2023 journal entry entitled More Than Enough. This is good news. He said, I'm the God of more than enough. I don't just supply all your needs. I give you an abundance. Not only do I give grace, I give a greater grace that will empower you through hurt, loss, temptation, and fear. I am your ever true unfailing source, and I want to be your goal. I love to give to you and shower you with abundance, but I also desire for you to know me as I know you. I love to reward your life with blessing and promises kept, but I long for the reward that you can bring me. And that is coming to me to have our hearts intertwined in deep love and communion. Will you choose to soak in my love and let me capture your heart with my presence? Wisdom for life and for decisions come from this place of nearness to me. Peace and enduring hope are birthed in my presence. Those who are close to my heart will receive revelations about the future and I will give you strategies to not just survive, but to thrive. When you draw very close to my heart, you will find it easier to put more trust in me rather than the world's systems to be your source of more than enough. This word reminds me of something that uh, Donna Rigney shared today. I had the absolute honor and joy of interviewing Donna and her son, John, uh, on a window into the supernatural this morning. That should air Friday night at 8. It is a beautiful episode. You don't want to miss that. Let's move on to November 8th, 2023. Obvious evil. Obvious evil is rearing its ugly head all over the world. Can we say amen? The enemy senses his coming gigantic failure in another attempt to control the world and make it serve him. He has activated the hearts of deceived men to carry out his schemes of death and destruction. Because your enemy is desperate, his schemes and those partnered with them are being revealed as obvious evil. And that's good news. It doesn't mean you should get more afraid if you see evil. It means God is exposing it. He's bringing it to the surface for all to see. He does say, this is hard for you to see, and it tears at your heart to see the violence and the hatred. The lying media are still shielding the wicked and covering up their dark crimes, but I'm going around them more and more. Truth will come before the eyes of the still asleep masses. He's going around. He's finding ways to come around them. In fact, the media's covering up of obvious evil will lead to their downfall because I will bring the truth to the light. Because this is a season for reaping what you have sown, those who lied about and did not protect the people from obvious evil will reap evil into their own lives. Obvious evil will shake many awake out of their stupor. And they will realize all the lies they believed, and they will see we are in the middle of a war between the darkness and the light. 
the ranks of those seeking truth will swell and you will have many reinforcements. Because I am the truth, those seeking truth will find me and my kingdom of light will grow on the earth. As painful as obvious evil is, know that I will use it to uncover and expose the deep darkness and it will return on their own heads. Continue to release the power of my spirit to awaken hearts, minds, and eyes to my truth and my light. And we will witness together the downfall of obvious evil. Hallelujah. I say yes and amen to that. We're going to go on to a journal nugget, which is an entry from my journal from a year ago. Uh, I like going back always and reading what God said a year ago because it often is coming into a greater fulfillment in, after a year, sometimes after two and three years, sometimes 20, 30, hundreds of years. There are prophecies that uh, Daniel told, that Isaiah told, that Ezekiel told, that have not yet come to promise so or come to fulfillment. So our timing is definitely not God's timing. So this journal nugget is from November 8th of 2022, and it's called The Pathway to Treason. The pathway to treason that many have chosen to walk on will now begin to be exposed. For some, the pathway to treason was deliberate. They chose their own power and wealth over loyalty to a nation. For others, the pathway to treason happened step by step as they became compromised by bribes or blackmail, and they found themselves cornered into betraying their land in order to keep from being exposed. But I tell you that exposure of treason is imminent and inevitable. I have continued to put before these treasonous ones an opportunity to choose life and freedom in me, but they have refused, and now their choice to continue in the ways of death will result in their treason being exposed. He's talked about treason a lot. We think of that as a pretty rare crime. Get prepared. It is not going to be rare in our day. Grave consequences will come to all who choose to betray my covenant nation. Mark today as the day these betrayals will begin to be exposed to the world. Take heart, my army of light. They will not continue to get away with their selfish, treasonous ways. Doomsday is here for them. For you, my remnant, your loyalty to my kingdom and your nation will be rewarded. But woe to those who have chosen the pathway to treason. Not a good idea. All right, this is going to begin a series of three uh, serious words that we need to take to heart and that those who are not partnering with God need to hear and take take a wake-up call. Uh, on November 9th, 2023, I heard Operation Cleanup. And he said, part of the rescue operation is Operation Cleanup. Not only am I removing entrenched evil in your society, I am removing its roots that have crept into the church through leaders who have justified and kept hidden gross sin. This kind of defiling sin sows corruption into the foundation of these leaders and their ministries. You need to understand that my focus is not on preserving ministers and their ministries. It is not on preserving um, church leaders who have justified and kept hidden gross sin. His focus, our focus really has been on saving, saving, saving. Don't let this church die. Don't let this ministry go. And it's like, if it's got defilement in its foundation, it can, it needs to go because God's able to raise up a more ministries, even better, you know? So we need to get in line with him. That's what I'm saying. You don't dump people because they've sinned. There's people that need to come alongside them and, restore them, first of all, to their relationship with the Lord. That's the most important thing. Let the ministry fall away. It's the most important thing is their relationship with the Lord himself. 
He said, you need to understand my focus is not on preserving ministers or the ministries they have built. My focus is on operation cleanup because the foundations of the church and its ministries must be built on my righteousness and justice. Just think about it. How can we offer the world righteousness and justice or demand it in earthly systems if we have not demanded it in the church itself? He goes on to say, my kingdom cannot be built on compromised foundations. Realize that I don't need big name leaders or their mega ministries in order to accomplish my purposes in the earth. I can and will raise up righteous leaders and ministries that are founded on my righteousness and justice. These will display my name. These will display my name and my ways to the world, and the world will be, will be drawn to the light and purity, the wholeness and the power of my presence. And I should just insert here, it's not that he can't use mega uh, ministries and pastors of mega ministries. He certainly can, because all, many of them are founded on true righteousness and justice, but he's just speaking to our natural mind that thinks, oh, oh, we've got to fix this and help it and prop it up. And it's like, mm. he says, this is really important for you to hear. Stop trying to preserve what I am judging. That's a message the church needs to hear today. He's got a much bigger picture than we do. He said, no more will I tolerate hidden sin and corruption in my church. No longer will my church worship personalities or ministries, which is modern day idolatry. They will worship me in the beauty of holiness. I will release deep healing and restoration to those defiled by a leader's gross sin. The defiled leader can be restored to relationship with me if there is deep repentance to me and to those they offended. Understand that I cannot clean out the evil in the world and ignore it in my church. My church must become my kingdom of light, where those deceived by the darkness can come to be cleansed and made whole. Will you trust the good work I am doing in Operation Cleanup, and will you join me in calling it forth? God, align our hearts with God in this hour. Things are not like they've always been. Uh, things are changing. A new era is coming, and what was allowed in the past will not be allowed in the future. November 10th, 2023, after judgment, my reign will come. And he says a big mess is being uncovered in the church and across all areas in your society as I uncover gross sin, corruption, idolatry, and witchcraft. And I mean in the church. Not It's outside the church too, but it has um, infiltrated the church as well. He said, you cannot leave garbage mixed in with good food because the garbage will cause the good food to rot. I cannot bring my glory to a church that tolerates gross sin in their leaders or only deals superficially with serious allegations, which they quickly cover up to preserve their ministry or their church. They put the victims of the leader's sin in a prison of silence, and they do not bring my healing to their fractured souls. If my glory descended on such a place that tolerates or winks at sin, many deaths could result. And he gave me the, the names Ananias and Sapphira, the two that died in the book of Acts because they lied to the Holy Spirit. Right on the spot, gone. I mean, God is serious. He's serious. You are completely, he said, you are completely behind me in my promises to remove corruption and evil from other areas of influence, are you completely behind me in removing corruption and evil in my church? There can be no exceptions to exposures of sin, no matter how powerful and needed you think their anointing is. I have hidden ones in my body who have kept their hearts and their lives pure 
before me, and I am able to raise them up and to give them greater anointings than the stars you are trying to protect. Know that after my judgment sweeps the church clean, I will send rains of cleansing and refreshing, and my church will become a place that displays my heart, my kingdom power, and my beautiful purity. After judgment, my reign will come. Only this time it wasn't R-A-I-N, it was R-E-I-G-N. Once he cleans out the corruption, washes us clean with the Holy Spirit reign, he will come and reign in our midst. November 11th, 2023, the 11th hour, our episode title. It is the 11th hour for your enemies. The window is closing on the opportunity to repent or to become a whistleblower. Those of you on the fence teetering between darkness and light, be wise and brave and jump into the light. Be part of saving a nation rather than destroying it for selfish greed. This is also the 11th hour for those in the body of Christ who have persisted in a sinful lifestyle of using and abusing my people and have hidden these sins behind religious facades. They have used the anointing on their life to consume people and finances, to feed their lust and perversion. Your refusal to come clean before the people and to repent to me have now placed you in a reaping stream of judgment. If you are one who knows that these people are living double lives in any area of society and you refuse to expose it and are helping to enable it, then you will place yourself in the same reaping stream of judgment. Wow, that's a serious word there. A good father issues a final warning before he brings the promised consequences for rebellious and destructive behavior. Respond now before it is too late. You will not be able to escape when my hammer blow breaks open the dam and exposure, judgment, and justice are released. Don't be hoodwinked by the great deceiver any longer. Choose to come into my light and refuse to be a servant of darkness any longer. In my light is hope for your future, an invitation to salvation through the blood of the Lamb, and cleansing from the slavery to sin. Hear my call and come now, because it is the 11th hour. Okay, those were three very heavy um, journal entries that uh, he is a righteous God. Yes, Yes, he is love and wonderful, but he is also righteousness and justice, and those are being established again. So we need to get in line with that. (laughs) November 12th, 2023. It won't be long now. Yes. Now, before I read this, just let me say that our it won't be long is probably much different than God's it won't be long. But (laughs) at least he is seeing that it is coming to a conclusion. Okay, he says, it won't be long now until you see victory pulled out of seeming defeat. It won't be long now until the darkness plays their last big card of destruction. I have forced their hand so that they have no option but to launch the card they think will win them the game. The stakes are very high. They're on the brink of losing it all, so they have no conscience about wiping you out. They have placed all their confidence in this last destructive card, and I have supplied them with faulty, lying intelligence that assures them they will win. They have been blinded to the fact that I hold the Trump card, and I will play it at a moment known only to me. You will see the shock in their eyes as their house of cards collapses in a sudden moment of time. Their most destructive card, their final act of hatred, will destroy them. I tell you these things so that you will continue in hope and strong faith. When things look dark, you keep advancing into the enemy's stolen territories, taking them back by the power of my might, by the authority of my son's blood, and by the weapon of your faith, 
your decrees, and your declarations. Remain at the ready, dressed in your armor of light, because it won't be long now. Wow. All right, a journal nugget, November 12th, 2022. This started out with a vision, and it's and the vision is the eagle landed. This morning, as I waited in God's presence, I saw in the spirit an enormous eagle that landed outside my sunroom. It was imposing, captivating, and terrifying. Its eyes burned with holy spire, holy fire that inspired awe. I asked the father what the eagle represented, and he responded, it is the return of your rightful leader and the hugeness of the call on his life to restore honor, righteousness, and justice to your nation. The piercing, fiery eyes of the eagle search out the enemies of your nation, and they call you to shoulder and carry your part in the rebirth and rebuilding of your land. In the coming days, you will see with your natural eyes that the eagle landed and that my call on his life has been fully activated. He cannot carry this enormous call alone. You must commit to join him in reestablishing and preserving freedom in my covenant nation. Let this cry be on your lips. God bless America and God keep her strong. And then the father spoke these words to me, a word. Live unto victory. In these closing days of fierce battle, no matter how desperate things may appear, it's important that you remember that I have promised you the victory. I want you to set your heart and mind on this promise and live unto victory. Spend time with me picturing a new day for your land, a day of freedom, abundance, creativity, and generosity. Let yourself dream big because my promises are huge. When you live unto victory, it will keep you refreshed and strengthened to finish the war in my power and my fierceness. Don't just focus on the daily battles because its ups and downs can play with your emotions. As my people who have received my sure word of promise, live unto victory. November 13th of 2023, the end of a dark rule over the world. Good news to hear this. You will witness the end of a dark rule over the world. You do not realize how deeply entrenched these evil roots have become and how many leaders in all areas of society have been sucked into eating the dark fruits of greed, lust, and hunger for power. This pervasive evil has been given the appearance of good. And they speak lofty words of tolerance and democracy while sucking you dry of resources and life. They speak of loving and accepting all, all that is, who live perverted lifestyles that bring forth no life and lead to destruction and despair. This dark rule labels true righteousness and justice as extreme and hateful. The rise of this dark rule was enabled by a church that became inward, self-absorbed, and neglected their assignment to be salt and light and to occupy until my son returns. There were a few of my sons and daughters who remained awake and who were aware of the dangers of the creeping dark rule as they faithfully cried out to me, I awakened more and more to join your ranks and you become a mighty remnant army of light. The dark rule has sown death and destruction, but you are sowing light, life, and love. The light is always more powerful than the darkness, and it will always overcome it. You have been sowing seeds of righteousness, light, and love into the soil of your nations by your prayers, decrees, and declarations and it will produce a life-giving crop of freedom and plenty. Keep sowing in faith, and you will see it bring about the end of a dark rule over the world. Wow. All right, we've got a journal entry to end with that is uh, really fun. Now we're going to go over our action items. They're also on my blog, dianalarkin.blogspot.com. So you can print them out. You can use them as a prayer guide. Uh, <clears throat> Whatever you choose. <laughs>
And we'll end with this, and then we're going to do our pictures at the end as well. So will we choose to soak in his love and let him capture our hearts with his presence? If our trust is in him, we will find it easier to rely on him as our source rather than world systems. Continue to release the power of his spirit to awaken hearts, minds, and eyes to his truth and his light. We are to stop trying to preserve what he is judging in the church. We are called to trust his good work that he is doing in Operation Cleanup and to join him in calling it forth. Are we completely behind him in his work of removing corruption and evil in the church? After the judgment, the rain and his rain will come. If you are teetering on the fence between dark and light, or if you're hiding sin behind a religious facade, be brave and come clean, repent, and fall on God's mercy through the blood of Jesus. When things look dark, we're to continue in hope and strong faith in his plans. We're to keep advancing into enemies, stolen territories, and take them back by the power of his might, the authority of Jesus' blood, and the weapon of our faith, decrees, declarations. Remain at the ready, dressed in your armor of light, because it won't be long now. We are to believe God's promises and live unto victory. Keep sowing our prayers, decrees, and declarations, and it will produce a life-giving crop of freedom and plenty and will help bring about the end of a dark rule over the world. Wow, do we ever want that day to come? All right, we're going to end with this journal nugget uh, for our pictures, November 13th of 2022. It's called It's Watch Party Time. Watch them fall. That's what I call a party. Faithful warriors, it is now time for a watch party. It is time to watch them fall. The appointed season of judgment is here, and you will see the ones given over to darkness fall, fall, fall. One after another, these formidable foes will be brought down by exposures, unexpected falls, and sudden deaths. As one after another of these corrupt leaders fall, an awakening will dawn among the people that my sovereign hand is behind this crushing of dark people and their destructive agendas. The season of fall is accomplishing its purpose of stripping the trees of their leaves. Now you will see this happen among those given to evil. They will be stripped of their positions, their wealth, their freedom, and some their lives. The winter will finally settle into quiet awe and a blessed peace as this nation is brought into unity and union. The spring will bring new life, new order, new abundance, and new purpose for a reborn nation founded on my justice, righteousness, and deep love. The fall of the fall, the winter of hope, and the spring of promise fulfilled will play out before your thankful eyes. Support my plans in prayer and rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. I'm hoping that he's speaking of this fall, this winter, and this spring, but that's not always necessarily the case. He always speaks in the present like that, and we think it's going to happen tomorrow, and, and it may but it may not be the time for that yet. His timing is perfect. We can totally rely on that. All right, it is picture time. Woohoo! All right, let's bring all this up. And let's see, where's my stuff here? Okay, you can open, you can do it. <laughs> Where'd you guys, where did you guys go? Hello. Well, something's happened here that I, let me stop and start to go out again. Something wasn't going right. We'll start with this. How's that? 
And that ought to work. And here we go. E Forma sent me this picture. And you can see right here, it's a lion's paw. And in his paw is a sword. Yes. We like that picture. Let me see. Let me start this back here so we get started at the beginning here. All right. And next, this was taken in the Philippines. Uh, Lynn sent this to me. This is amazing rainbow swirly clouds above the clouds of darkness. Uh, if that isn't a promise for our day, I don't know what is. <laughs> Beautiful. Annie sent me this picture. It is uh, either, it's a bird of some kind. There's the beak, here's the head. And here's the wings like this. And it's kind of diving out of heaven, like on its back, which is really interesting. I don't know if that's an eagle or what it is, or a host, because the host can have very different shapes than we're used to seeing. But whatever it is, that is powerful, Annie. Thanks for sending that in. Kimberly sent this uh, picture. And I did, I drew a line here because it was quite faint, but there is a huge rainbow over this sun and you can see the the movement in the clouds that could be the host streaming so wow that is an amazing picture um this one was sent by wendy nope yes no kimberly how why is that so small <laughs> i think this is kimberly Anyway, this she was on um, a prayer assignment with a group of intercessors, and they were praying um, like one of the feasts they were playing, praying in. This is the Washington State Capitol Building in Olympia. And as they were praying, this beam of light showed up, shining down on them. Wow. Powerful. Uh, this is Joy. She sent this in. Um, this was after the fire in Lahaina. And she feels like these were mercy angels flying over the destruction of Lahaina. So good to know that our God is there. Roxanne sent me this amazing picture. This was taken up at Moravian Falls, which uh, many of you will know was a place dedicated to prayer uh, many years ago. And the, I guess, you know, the the air is thin there. That's a Scottish expression, meaning that the supernatural is very close, just all the prayers that went into that. And this is a lamb. If you can see his head, there's this fluffy ear. And the lamb is the symbol for a Moravian Falls. And then we have here the head, and it's an angel or something big, maybe even Jesus as the lamb over that place. Powerful picture. Deborah sent this one, and I did put markings on this because, again, it was just so faint. You know, when you're on the move and you see a sight you have to capture, it isn't always the best quality, but it's worth getting it. What this showed were two lines like a road and with the, the uh, broken line down the middle, like you would see. So God was highlighting a road from heaven has been opened up and is invading the earth. And this is Lila that sent this. And these are arrows. Yeah, you can see. And they are glowing uh, with fire arrows. I did a several arrow pictures because they were sent to me this week uh, because my interview with Ash West, he had a vision where he saw our prayers as arrows and as the host actually flying those arrows and doing destruction to the enemy. So these are great confirmations of what his vision saw and how powerful our prayers are. Kathy sent this. They are like, they're almost like dancing hosts being released into the atmosphere. 
And we like that. Now let me get this. Oops, come back, come back. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's see. This one, uh, Dee sent in, she was taking a picture of the sunset over Myrtle Beach, North Carolina. And when she looked at the picture, the, a stunning cross appeared. Gorgeous, beautiful. Let's see here. Move this along. Here we have uh, Jean. Yep, Jean sent this. This is, you can see a rainbow around this, and it is an open portal. Wow, that's very powerful. Streaming down from it. The light of heaven, his glory. Ah, good stuff. This uh, Teresa sent, this is really a fun picture because on her kitchen wall, suddenly there appeared this little patch of rainbow. I mean, just God going, I love you. My promises are true. <laughs> so precious. Wendy sent this one in. And it's some kind of big dude here, kind of laying on his, or I don't know, you can just see his head and mouth, nose, eyes, but he kind of looked like a bear to me. And if you see here, his arm is under the cloud, but he is holding a sword at the ready. Go for it. Get our enemies. All right. Um, Patty sent this picture in, and it is a beautiful open portal, huge open portal. And there's even a rainbow in it. Wow, that one is just stunning. Betty sent this photo. It is a flaming, fiery host. Here is the wing, the body, and the other wing. And there's the fire that's sending him forth. Beautiful. Kate sent this. Look, it's host streaming out, streaming out, streaming out on assignment. This is what our declarations, our decrees, and our prayers do. It activates the host to go on our behalf. Uh, Doug's friend took this picture and he sent it to me. It is a golden bird flying away from the sunset. It's even got its mouth open like he's coming for something. Dottie sent this fiery, fiery sunset um, over uh, the ocean or a lake. I'm not sure which, uh, but right here, if you see, there is also a beam of light, a column of light that is coming, piercing down through this opening. God is on the move. Wow. Oops, wrong thing. Okay, okay, don't get nervous. It's so fussy. All right, here we go. That was Eformas, so we already did that one. Okay, maybe, was that it? Are we done? Let me see, what's this one? No, we haven't done this one. This Mary sent in, you guys, it's, it's the American flag. Here's the blue field that would have the stars, red, white, red stripes. Is that stunning or what? God has our nation on his heart and mind. This uh, Tammy sent, and you can see another open portal. Glory portals are being opened by our prayers. And down again, we see this column of light. Angels, hosts, ascending and descending. Answers to prayer coming down. Prayers going up. Hallelujah. Rose sent this. Here's another arrow picture. See, here's the head of the arrow and its body and all the feathers coming off from it. But they're not just plain feathers. They're rainbow colored. Gorgeous. Powerful. Michelle sent this one in. It is a host. You see the wing here. And here you see his mighty sword. He is on the move. 
Ash sent this picture in, and I had to include it because it's a pink angel. I love it. And he's powerful. Nothing fussy about this one. I wouldn't want to, if I was the darkness, I wouldn't want to come against him. This is the prophetic art of James Nesbitt. He's an amazing artist. And my friend Joanne sent this to me. She uh, keeps up on his art and such. And this, I just thought for the season that we're in, this rainbow host or angel is such a representation of what God is showing us right now the multicolored dimensions of heaven coming to earth. Woohoo! April sent this photo in. You can see, again, a large bird. Gotten a lot of pictures. There's the body. Here's the other wing. Just powerful things are being released uh, to come to our aid. God is so good. So, so good. Another arrow. This one's from Dawn, and this one is headed down. These are all the feathers coming off for it, and we don't quite see the, the tip of the arrow, but <clears throat> there it is. And this could be a host, too, because he could be in the shape of an arrow. Pretty cool. All right, this um, Glenda sent me. This appeared on Facebook. It, it's Northern Lights in Russia, but in the midst of the Northern Lights, here comes this light swirl. Wow. There are things we don't know about that God is doing on our behalf in the atmosphere. Um, Nat sent this to me. And the reason that this is so significant, you can see a big host wing there. You can see something going on here. Like there's I don't know what that is, like a rod that's coming down out of heaven. What makes this picture so significant, it was taken in Manhattan, lower Manhattan, very close to where the trials are, are taking place of DJT. You can see in the sky, God is not blind. He is not deaf. He is responding. And this one, let's see here. Make sure that we get everything. Yeah, this will be our last one. Then Jen sent this in. It's really an interesting, uh, it's a block-shaped cloud. And she wondered if it was like a step up into the heavenlies, which it certainly could be. I wondered if maybe it could be like God's footstool appearing on the earth. And like, he's He's uh, giving us authority over that. and. Our enemies are going to be under him. So anyway, thank you all for um, sending all your amazing pictures. And there's more. I've got more uh, to share. That's probably what I felt like people could handle for one session. So if you've sent one in, don't despair. Um, I did want to mention, too, I got some other fiery sunsets, beautiful pictures from Linda, Kathy, and Patricia, and just not to repeat and take you, leave you here forever. I, um, I will just mention them. Um, and then also, I think, yeah, I don't know what that was talking about. My note, my little scribbled notes, <laughs> but thank you all for sending pictures. They are so appreciated and they totally bless my heart. And I know many people have said how much it blesses them to see these and be encouraged by them. And all your comments, all, all the times you share what you hear, you, you repost it or you um, send it off to friends, it just gets God's words of encouragement spread around and awakens more saints to pray, to join in the remnant army. And instead of wringing our, whole, our hands at home and being worried and anxious, we are on the offensive and we are taking back our land. So let's end with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much. You are amazing. You fill our skies with signs and wonders that let us know you are at work. You're near. You are a faithful God who keeps his promises. If you can make hosts and rainbows appear, 
You can make food appear on our tables. You can defeat the enemy soundly. You can expose the enemy. We just need to align our hearts with you. And we choose to do that this day. We align our hearts with you, the one true and living God, so powerful, so great, and so mighty, and yet so loving. That you want us to draw near to you and be close to your heart is just it's such an honor, such a privilege. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that restored us to fellowship with the Father and brought the Holy Spirit to indwell us, empower us, and give us great grace for our lives. Father, would you seal us now as we stand or sit here before you seal our hearts in your love and in our determination to stay with you to the end and to see the long-awaited victory come forth. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's been a great pleasure to be with you again. And until we meet again, today, may you be very, very blessed with grace, with glory, with strength. And I love you all. <laughs> oh, I did have one important announcement. And that is um, my ministry has grown to a place where I don't have enough hours in the day to cover all your questions and your just your amazingness. Uh, and so I have uh, been able to hire an assistant due to your generosity to me. And Patty Tycro has become uh, my assistant. So you'll see comments from her and see her responding to emails and such. And she always lets me know what's going on with people. So I'm not disconnected from you, but uh, I just don't have that time anymore, which is kind of sad to me, but know that I love you all. And she's wonderful. You will love her. If you want to get to know her, I've done several interviews with her on a Watchman's Journal channel. So, and I'm also on Rumble. So you can find me there, Diana Larkin or Journal Diana 11. All that stuff, if you just open the description box, you will find it there. Okay. All right. Done with announcements. I love you all. Until next time, bye.